All right, uh, let's get started. Uh, today, there's nothing officially due. Uh, there's no homework assignment due today. There is uh, the 8.3 homework on trig integrals is due on Wednesday, and then the 8.4 over uh, trigonometric substitutions will be due on Friday. So uh, today, uh, you don't have one that's officially due. Uh, but I am happy to answer any homework questions that you have over it. And um, so, any questions? Yes. 50? Yeah, okay. Number 50, we have the integral of cosecant to the tenth, uh, let's see, a yeah, tenth of x times um, cotangent cubed of x dx. Okay. And uh, if you've watched the video lectures uh, so far, you know that like when you get into like cosecants and cotangents, it's not always just as easy as could be. You've got to kind of try some stuff and see how it goes. So what we're really looking to do here is to make a nice substitution. Um, and so any ideas, like something here whose derivative we actually know. Um, so first of all, what's the derivative of cosecant? Yeah. Yeah, it's negative cosecant cotangent. So if we let u be cosecant, we do have a cosecant, we do have a cotangent, but we also have two more cotangents. Maybe that's okay because maybe we can change those other two cotangents into cosecants. Okay, so look, that's not a bad way to start. Let's look at this. So we have cosecant to the 10 of x times uh, cotangent. This is a cotangent squared of x and a cotangent of x. Correct? This thing, I could write it this way. So the cotangent squared, how would I write that so that instead of having cotangents, I have cosecants? Yeah. Cosecant squared minus one. Yeah, what's the identity? It's one plus cotangent squared of x is equal to cosecant squared of x, correct? That's the identity that we need to remember. I want to turn cosecant squared into co, uh, I'm sorry, cotangent squared into cosecants. So that would mean that cotangent squared of x is cosecant squared of x minus one. Agreed? So I can take this and plug it in for two of the cotangents. So I get cosecant squared x minus one. And then I still have that one cotangent of x hanging out, uh, dx. Now, why? Why did I just do that? Because if I substitute for cosecant of x, the derivative of cosecant of x is cosecant, negative cosecant cotangent x, correct? So if I want to make this just as clear as could be, I could rewrite one more time, and I will just to make it super clear. I think if I were doing this by myself, I might skip this step, but it's okay. So what I want is one of these cosecants, I'm going to put over here with the cotangent. So I'm going to write this as uh, cosecant, to the ninth of x times cosecant squared of x minus one 
times cosecant of x times cotangent of x dx. And the reason I wrote it over here is now if I let u be equal to cosecant of x, then du is going to be negative cosecant x cotangent x dx, which is very, very close to what I have right here. I have cosecant x cotangent x dx. I need a negative in there, so let's just put a negative in, which means I need a negative on the outside. And now I can make my substitution. When I do, I get negative integral. Cosecant of x is u, so this is u to the ninth. Cosecant of x is u, so this is times u squared minus 1. And then negative cosecant x, cotangent x, dx, all that just becomes du. Now I can multiply through, and I get negative integral of u to the 11th minus u to the 9th du. And now that's just a power rule integral. So I could say that this is negative antiderivative u to the 11th is u to the 12th over 12. Then antiderivative of negative u to the 9th is negative u to the 10th over 10 plus c. We're not quite done yet because u I need to write it in x's, not in u's. So every u is a cosecant of x. So I just get that this is negative cosecant to the 12th of x over 12 minus cosecant to the 10th of x over 10 plus c. And if you wanted to distribute that negative, you could. But this is pretty good. Sound good. Uh, sometimes on these types of problems, that's not necessarily the only way to get there. This time, thinking about u as cosecant of x worked out. What if I would have thought about the u as cotangent of x? What's the derivative of cotangent of x? Again, negative cosecant squared. So I would have been able to get rid of all the cotangents as a u cubed. But, and I would have been able to get rid of a couple of the cosecants. But then I have a bunch of other cosecants hanging out, which I could have converted the rest of the cosecants to cotangents. That would have worked. But it would have been, I think, just a little bit more messy than this one. But doable. Okay. Um, other questions? Yeah. 25. 25, yeah. Okay, number 25. Ah, yes. Fun times. 25 is uh, the integral of sine squared x cosine to the fourth x dx. Now, this is in the case, uh, if you've watched the lecture, where both the sine of the... This, uh, I'm sorry, the exponent of the sine and the exponent of the cosine are both even, right? So if one of them is odd, it's a lot easier. If both of them are even, it's more difficult. They're both even. So what we have to do when both of the powers on the sine and the cosine are even is we have to use half angle identities, okay? So let's replace uh, sine squared of x with what I know its half angle identity is. And does anybody know what that is? Well, 
Yeah. 2x over 2. Yep, 1 minus cosine 2x over 2. And then this one, this is really cosine of x squared squared. And cosine of x squared's half angle identity is 1 plus cosine of 2x over 2. That's cosine squared of x. But so cosine to the fourth of x is that squared dx. Sound good? Okay. So now I should probably square this thing. Okay, if we're going to get anywhere. So let me rewrite. This is integral of. Uh, by the way, I could get rid of a bunch of twos on the bottom. I've got a two on the bottom here, and here I have a two squared on the bottom. So let's just get all those out of the integral. So I have two times two times two is eight. So I could put a one eighth up here and just get rid of all those bottom fractions. Then inside I have one minus cosine of two x. And then I have one plus cosine of two x quantity squared. So let's think about squaring that. One squared is one. Then I get two times one, which is two, times cosine of two x, which is plus two cosine two x. And then I square this guy and I get plus cosine of two x squared. Okay, uh, it looks like I need to keep on multiplying things out here. So um, let's do it. So we've got one eighth integral of, okay, I've got a little multiplying to do here. First, let's multiply the one by everything. I get one plus 2 cosine of 2x plus cosine squared of 2x. So that was 1 times all this stuff. Then I need to multiply negative cosine of 2x by all that stuff. So I get negative cosine of 2x times 1, which is minus cosine 2x. And I get uh, minus 2 cosine squared of 2x uh, minus 1 times cosine cubed of 2x. All of that dx. Okay, so now the question is, does this simplify at all? A little bit, right? Uh, we have 2 cosine of 2x is minus 1 cosine of 2x, so we just have one of them. And then we have a cosine squared of 2x minus 2 cosine squared of 2x. So we just have minus one of those. So let's rewrite it. So that 1 8 integral of 1. Then I have two of these minus one of these. So plus a cosine 2x. I have one of these minus two of these. So minus cosine squared of 2x. And then for cubed, I just have this minus cosine cubed of 2x dx. Okay, so far so good. Any questions before I move on? Okay, here's the thing. Do I know the antiderivative of 1? I do. So, good. Do I know the antiderivative of cosine of 2x? Yeah, I could do it. Do I know the deriv antiderivative of this guy? I do not, but I do know the half angle identity. Right, so I might have to use a half angle identity again on this guy. And then finally, this guy is cosine cubed. That's an odd number. So take off one of the cosines change all the rest of the cosines to sines and do a u substitution. So this I can do, this I can do, this I need a half angle identity, 
this I need to use a little bit of a trick from this section. Make sense? Okay, so let's do all of that. Um, so first let me rewrite. So first of all, I have one eighth times, and I'm gonna do some things here. So first let's just write the integral that we know that we know. We know how to do the integral one plus cosine of two X dx. So these two are easy. Next, I need to do this one, minus uh, cosine squared of 2x. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to break it into a separate integral and say this is minus the integral. Instead of cosine of 2x in here, though, I'm going to use the half angle identity. And the half angle identity for cosine squared of 2x would be 1 plus cosine of now, it's not 2x anymore because we double it. So this would be a 4x over 2 dx. So that's going to help us to do this cosine squared. And then finally, we have minus the integral. This is a cube, so I'm going to break off one of the cosines. So I'll write this as cosine 2x times cosine squared of 2x, which could be written as 1 minus sine of 2x. So 1 minus sine, sorry, squared of 2x dx. Close friends. Now look at this. This one we can do. This one we can do. Um, because now it's just a cosine, not a cosine squared. This one we need to use a u substitution to do. But the other ones we can just go ahead and do right now. So let's do it. Uh, down here, this is a u sub just, I'm just going to use substitute for this integral. So up here, I'll draw a little arrow. I'm going to let u be equal to sine of 2x which means that du is uh, 2 cosine of 2x. So I need a 2 here, which means I need a 1 half here. And now I'm ready to make that new substitution. All right, uh, let me move back over here. So this is equal to uh, that 1 8 is still out front. Now let's take antiderivatives as we can. Antiderivative of 1 is x. Antiderivative of cosine of 2x, sine's derivative is cosine, so this is sine of 2x, but because of the 2, we need to divide by 2. Then we're subtracting minus antiderivative of 1 half which is one half x. And then we need the antiderivative of cosine of four x over two, which is sine of four x. And then we need to divide by four, but there's a two on bottom, so that's an eight. And then we need to make a u substitution. So we get minus one half. And inside the integral, we have Integral of 1 minus u squared du. All right. Uh, close parentheses. We're very close. So let's write this again. So we have the 1 8 times. A lot of this stays the same. We have an x, we have plus sine of 2x over 2. We have, I'll go ahead and distribute that negative. I get minus 1 over 2x. Then I distribute the negative and I get minus sine of eight, uh, 4x over 8. 
Okay, and now I can take an antiderivative. So I get minus one half times the antiderivative of one is u. Uh, if I want to, I could write in u right here, but I'm I'm taking enough space as it is, so maybe I'm going to get lazy and say the antiderivative is u. What's u? Sine of 2x. So this is sine 2x. And then what's the antiderivative of negative u squared? I guess it would be minus u cubed over 3. So it's minus u sine of 2x cubed over 3 plus c. And I suppose if I really wanted to be totally complete here, I could multiply through by the negative one half, combine some like terms, and then multiply through by the one eighth. But I feel pretty good about this. That is the antiderivative even though it might be able to be simplified just a little bit. There actually is one nice thing that would happen, right? You would at least cancel this guy and this guy. So, yeah. Any time that both of the powers here are even, the problem is sort of horrible, and the higher the powers, the more horrible. Okay, so like if you had to do the integral of sine to the fourth, cosine to the fourth, that's just not fun at all. Uh, but we could do it. It just would take more of this kind of work of breaking it down using half angles, breaking it down using uh, like breaking one off to the side and substituting and you just keep going and going and going and eventually you'd get down to the answer. Yeah. Uh, there's some problems that you can use the Yes. Would you rather us do it the other way? Um, what I would say is it's good to do this once. If it, if once you're kind of like, okay, I've done number 25, I get it. I know what I would do. I had a really, really good professor in graduate school, and he always told me, and there were some like ridiculous uh, handwritten computations that I was doing that were just like absurd, but I could just type them into the computer and it would just do. It. And uh, he always told me, you always have to do it one time, like to know where it came from. And then once you understand all this and you're like, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Then it's like, yeah, please use the computer. You know what I mean? Like, but just make sure that before you start using like the, the nice reduction formulas, make sure you know why the reduction formula works. Because if you ever come up against something that's like just a slightly different tweak and the reduction formula doesn't work, then you need to know how to do it still. So. It's good to work through one of these by hand first. Other questions? Yeah. 59. Okay. 59. Yeah. Okay. Let me erase here. This problem looks so innocent when it's sitting there. Just a sine squared and a cosine to the fourth. Let's see, you said 59? Yeah. Okay. So 59. We have integral 0 pi over 2 of the square root of 1 minus cosine of 2x. D. 
dx. Okay. Where have you seen this before? Yeah, in one of the half angle identities, one of the half angle identities says that sine squared of x is equal to 1 minus cosine of 2x over 2. Correct? If I multiply both sides of the equation by 2, then I get that 2 sine squared of x is 1 minus cosine of 2x. So I could replace 1 minus cosine of 2x by 2 sine squared of x, and that seems good. Okay, so let's do it. So I get integral 0 to pi over 2 of the square root of 2 sine squared x dx by our half angle identity. By the way, now in this chapter, I officially expect you to know the half angle identities uh, because they just come up so much. And they will throughout the course. So it's just kind of like one of those things that you should just know are your two half angle identities. Okay, uh, the square root of two is just a constant. It could just be pulled out completely. And so we have the square root of two integral from zero to pi over two of the square root of sine squared of x, which is just sine x dx. Okay, uh, so I just have square root of two. Antiderivative of sine of x is what? Get negative cosine of x. And that's evaluated from zero pi over two. Um, all right, so this is equal to square root of two times. If I plug in pi over 2, cosine of pi over 2 is what? Zero. Yeah, zero minus, and then I plug in zero. Cosine of zero is one, but I have a negative, so I get negative one. So I have zero minus minus one, otherwise known as one. So this is just square root of 2. Sound good? Cool. Other questions? Yes? 60. Yeah, so Okay, so really the only major, we're going to pi over 8, and cosine is 8x. Okay. Yeah, it's I believe this is the difference. So I'm going from 0 to pi over 8, 1 minus cosine 8x. Is that correct? Okay, so we're really doing the same thing. We just have to think about what is it that would be in that half angle. When I double it, it gives me 8x. So the double is 8x, so the original is 4x. So I get that sine squared of 4x would be 1 minus cosine of 2 times 4x, right, which is 8x over 2. So that's the version of uh, the half angle identity that's going to be helpful to us right now. So then I can multiply both sides by 2, and then everything is sort of the same. So I don't think I need to go through it again. But once you make the substitution that this thing is 2 sine squared of 4x, everything else is pretty much like the last one. If you're ever in doubt 
about how to do that right there, what you could do is you could say, okay, I know that this is double the angle, right? So I know that I want the original angle. So what I can say is that 8x is equal to 2 theta, right? It's the double of something. And then you could just say, oh, that means that theta equals 4x. And so now that's what goes in for theta right there, where this is theta and this is 2 theta. So if ever in doubt, just think about it that way then. Oh, and or if you're having to substitute this way, you say, oh, whatever it is in here is theta. So whatever I'm going to put in over here, I need to double it. Whatever. So. Sound good? Okay. Well, I don't want to take all of your fun uh, before. Uh, let's see. Man. It's hard for me to even remember what the days are anymore. I guess before Wednesday, right? So uh, we will talk more about this section on Wednesday, but I think I'm going to end it there for now. I'd like you to think about these problems. I don't want to just do them all. So try all the problems. Come back with some questions on Wednesday. Oh, somebody did write something. Let me see. Okay. <laughs> not, not what we needed, but yes. Where do they come from? Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's see. That is an interesting question. That's something that you'd prove in trigonometry. Unfortunately, I don't have like the proof like right on. I'd have to think about it for a minute. So let me think about it. I'll tell you. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. I think that's it for today. Uh, I'll answer more questions over this section on Wednesday. Have a very good sunny afternoon.